Howdy y'all, my name is Oliver the Shoe Man and today we're going to be working on a pair of Thursday boots. Now these aren't it's fairly worn, just a little bit. The stitches are broken on the bottom. The heels worn down a little bit. It's still got a lot of life in them. Um, but the other pair, the one that I have finished up already on the side, where the stitches broke, it started to peel away from the welt. So we're going to go take this, turn it into that, and we're gonna do a little bit of a review uh, as we take apart the boot, kind of break it down layer by layer and show you how they're made and why Thursday boots aren't a bad option. All right, so let's get started here. Taking this top lift off. The top lift is that rubber heel portion that you walk on and wear down. You see, that's the heel block. That's the rubber heel that you walk on. And they got little holes in there that they put some nails in to hold the top lift to the, or the leather heel block. Next, we're gonna start taking off the leather heel block, which with Thursday boots is always a pain in the butt because they do such a dang good job removing or gluing them down. The easiest way for me is just to peel it up layer by layer. And then I like to make sure I label each piece. T is for top one and we'll put two on that one. Typically, with other brands, these heel blocks come right up without an issue. And I've tried multiple times just to get this whole block up to come up with multiple Thursday boots. And it is just glued down solid. You see those nails right there? Those are threaded nails that go in from the shoe they go inside underneath that sock liner and that holds the leather heel base on and that's why i'm having an issue pulling this up so i'm going to cut those get those out the way and then this piece should come up go number two all right down number three number four you see that's a half layer and that's just because when they balance the shoe um, you have to sand down with the layers so the back is a little bit taller than the one here in the, the, the in the front yeah so your back portion is taller than the front portion so it's balanced and it sits nicely. You see with this one, how this whole heel is sitting all the way to the back. Um, you can kind of see this top or this layer right here is a lot thicker than the front. And that just gives for a well-balanced boot. A lot of times some manufacturers won't balance them properly and you'll be resting right there and that shoots pain right up into your legs and your ankles and it's just not fun so when you're buying boots make sure that they're well balanced the back portion of the heel sits flat with the, the whole shoe so thursday boots use a 360 goodyear welted construction which means the welt which I'll explain to you here in a second what that is, goes all the way around the shoe. And the soles are stitched all the way around the shoe. 
which gives the boots kind of a wider stance and base to walk on, which can be more comfortable for your, your foot and while you're walking. Versus the 270 degree welt, which starts at your ankle bone, goes all the way to the front and ends at the other ankle bone. And then you have a heel rand. Now that's more for dressier style shoes with a thinner heel block. But I like the Goodyear welted, the 360 Goodyear welted boots. So now we have that sole off. Now we have a leather midsole. I'll peel that up. Then you have from here all the inner workings of the boots. Here near the back where those nails are. Kind of gets tricky. Alright, and there you go. You have a nice leather midsole. Now, could I have just, after I took the sole off, put the new sole on top, sand the surface, take all the old threads out, and then put a new one on top and restitch it? Yes, that could have worked and that would have been a lot easier. However, you see the inner cork just is crumbling and breaking down, which over time from where the cork does start to do that. Um, what the cork does, it acts as a filler and sort of a padding for your foot while you're walking. It'll start to form to your foot and be a little bit more comfortable. I'm just removing all the the old stitching that, the, that held the sole on. You got to do that if you're going to restitch it. So, yeah, no. You can kind of see there's a, a cavity that needs to be filled because when you have your footbed, let's say this is your footbed. Let's say this piece of leather is your footbed. The footbed is that piece that you're walking on, your foot steps onto, and eventually over time molds to your foot. What you got is a piece of gemming which you can see is that white piece right there. That gets glued all the way around the shoe. And then it has this portion right here that kind of stands up and creates that 90 degree angle. And then from there you have your welt, which is this piece of leather right here. That gets stitched to the uppers and the lining and the gemming they all come together and get stitched to that piece. That's right there, that gimming piece. From there, because you're making kind of a cavity, that's what that cavity is. It's that piece of gimming that kind of creates a 90 degree. You have to fill that, and you fill that with cork. Which, like I said, over time, just like anything, starts to break down. And brings me to my main point, why I replaced or took off that midsole because I want to get to that cork and replace it. So what I did there is I hammered the nails, those threaded nails I told I showed you that were holding the base on through. You see them there? Those also have to come out. Which right there. Because when you go to set new ones in there, you don't really want Whole bunch of nails on the footbed while you're walking it could get uncomfortable and just build up and actually weaken the leather and the boots so we got them all out and then we go to put the new heel base on or once we glue these pieces together put the heel base on we'll put some more nails in there holding it all securely now at this stage I will take and just clean out 
a lot of this old cork. You don't want to leave really any pieces in there because when you go to put new cork in there, you could, so some pieces that are stuck in there can kind of create a hump. And then you can feel that on the inside of your shoes and it could be uncomfortable. So that's why you try to clean it out as best as you can. All right, so we got most of it cleaned out. It'll be good enough. I'll get some of the other small pieces. I'll blow it out with the, the nozzle, air nozzle. So here you have, here you have the gimme, that white piece that I showed you. You have your footbed and you can kind of see there's a black stitch. I don't know how can I show you guys. There's a black stitch right there that is stitching the gimming to the footbed, which over time, once the gimming starts to come unglued, like right here, it could come loose from the footbed and then you start to lose the shape and the size of the shoe, it starts to expand. So by stitching it in place, even though if it starts to come unglued, like right here, you won't have any issues with the sh shoes losing shape. Then you also have this piece right here, which is a canvas piece that bridges the two pieces together. When the welt is stitched, it goes through that, which even rein reinforces this part even more, which has the most stress. So what we're going to do, I'm going to glue the giving down, glue this back down, fill it with cork, and then we'll be ready for the midsoles. So I glued everything down, cleaned it out. And these are little cork sheets that we glue into place. Now cork comes in a few different options. You have these pre-cut sheets like I have and I, I prefer to use. You also have full rolls of sheet of cork. And then you have hot cork, which you might have seen some other cobblers use. I preferably rec I prefer to use this style it's quick simple it's what I was taught how to use when I learned how to fix shoes this is how I was taught I mean you put glue on a couple sheets let it dry for about five minutes and stick it into place. Hammer it down, sand, and you are ready for the midsoles to go on. I'm just trimming off a little bit of the edges here before I hammer it. That way it'll sit flat around the edges. Just hammer it in. All right, then we sand. Now, once the cork is all filled in, oh, and by the way, when I was saying 360, it means it goes all the way around. So that's what a 360 Goodyear welted. 270 starts here, it goes around, stops right there, and then the back portion, there's a heel grand. And it's not as wide. The heel base isn't as wide. Um, so yeah, that just gives a little bit more of a sturdier base. Um, at this point, now we've cleaned everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and get some glue on here. Now, just as a little, what is it? Not TSA, TSA, I don't know, what's that one? Public service announcement. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Please, if you have shoes that are coming unglued, do not go buy Gorilla Glue from the store. Try to glue it yourself. Don't use hot glue. Don't really use any over-the-counter glues because you would just ruin your shoes. And then when you take it to the cobbler, 
they're gonna have to charge you more to clean up what you have done. And you're gonna, it's, it's easier just to take it to a cobbler. We use a special contact cement that you put a couple layers on both sides. Let it dry for 15, 20 minutes. And then when you stick it in place, creates a really nice bond between the two layers. So here we're just putting glue on our new leather midsoles. Now we're gonna let this dry for 15 minutes. Once the glue has dried for about 10 to 15 minutes, we go ahead and heat the two up, two pieces up to reactivate the glue. And you gotta go ahead and stick it and make sure that it sticks and there's plenty of area around to sand and trim. All right, so now we're gonna take it over to my welt roller and press the edges. All right, now I'm filming with one hand here. So that lifts that foot up and it's connected to a spring. And so when it's set down, it puts pressure on this wheel. And when you turn this handle, it turns the wheel. So when you put the welt and the midsole in between those two and you spin it, it rolls around the whole shoe and presses the edges down. Let's talk about soles. So Thursday, use this studded sole. Now there's a couple options that we can use. There is a day-night sole, which is a British-made sole, which is a great option. Very similar to what you have here. And then Vibram, which is American-made, also has a very same style sole. The little, um, I want, I want what you call these protrusions, little dots. They're a little bit closer, um, but this is still a really great option for boots, for soles. They also have Vibram heel top lifts and day-night top lifts, which I'm actually out right now. So for this case, we're going to be doing a day-night sole with a Vibram heel, which I know they don't match, but It'll work and it'll just be, it'll be just fine. We also have different Vibram soles if you wanted to change up the style a little bit. This one is the 430 sole. It's got that little mini lug pattern on the inside. This one is personally my favorite sole when it comes to putting them on shoes for the traction, for the grip, and just for the look of it. It's my favorite. We also have the Vibram 700 sole, which also comes in a brown. It's a very nice V-tread grip. Then we also have a corded Vibram sole. All really good quality rubber soles that are gonna last a very long time, just like the Thursday boots. While we're waiting for that to dry, I glued two pieces together, and now we're about to stick the other one together. I just want to make sure everything lines up properly. Now I got the heel base stacked up, re-glued, secured together. We'll get some glue on this top piece. And then we have our heel all scuffed up. I'll wipe it off with some acetone. Get some glue on this. I'll let that dry. Now, a lot of times, cobblers will go ahead and put the heel base on first to the shoe, sand it, and then finish it, and then put the top lift on top. However, right here is called the heel breast. And when you go to sand that portion, you scuff up the sole 
and it, you leave really bad marks right there. So what I like to do is glue the top lift to the, the heel base first. Now, once that's together, I could clean up the heel breast area, make it nice and smooth and dye it black. Then you go ahead and glue all that together and then you get a really nice heel breast. Not, and then you don't scuff up the soles and it just it makes for a cleaner, nicer job. Just small details, but I like to pay attention to those. So I didn't hit record. I thought I did. I was explaining to you what I was doing, but we have the soles on. Um, you want to, when you put the sole on, you want to center this pattern onto the shoe so that you don't go stitching over it. Now it can be kind of tricky, but with practice, um, you could get it. And I thought I was recording me putting the sole on, but I wasn't. So now we're gonna press the edges with our welt roller, do a trim, and then we'll be ready to stitch the soles on. I am now recording, I see it recording. This is my Landis L outsole stitcher, stitching machine. It stitches shoes on the outside, hence outsole stitcher. Um, we have a bottom thread and a top thread, but the shoe is stitched upside down. So this bottom thread is really the top thread and this top thread is really the bottom thread. Now with all of my soles, I like to countersink my stitches. Um, that way when you start walking on them, you're walking on the soles and not the stitching and you don't break the stitching as fast. Now here, this little piece right here, has an, there's a little bit of a knife that you can adjust how deep you want to go. So I have it barely protruding so it cuts into the rubber while stitching it. Um, I already roughened up this back portion because we've got to stitch it all the way around. And you don't want to sand it while the stitches are there because you'd break the stitching. So let me go ahead and readjust this. Readjust you guys. That way I could stitch comfortably because that's important. I've adjusted the stitch length. So hopefully we can hit all of those holes. I'm gonna try to hit all the original holes. That way it looks like it was never taken apart. And then we could set our depth guide here. So we got our depth guide set so it won't go too far in. We got our, our gauge, our width adjustment set just right. Now we're just gonna go ahead and stitch this thing and pray that we get all of the original holes. So we'll turn that on. All right. Just like that, we have our soles stitched on and it looks like we did pretty good with the stitching, which is kind of hard to tell because it's all black. But it looks like we did pretty good. Now our last step is to go ahead and attach our heel base. See, I've already cleaned that up, made it look nice. I'm gonna wipe this off so that the leather will adhere really well to the rubber. Like we did the other ones. Get a coat of glue on the sole. And then another coat of glue on the heel. Let it sit and dry for 10 to 15 minutes. Hammer them together, nail the heel base, do the final trim condition, and we are good to go.
So this is what we call a heel wheel. It has this little, I don't know what you want to call it, post, but on the inside, you can see those little round tubes or pins, um, and then the holes that are into it. So what we do is we take threaded nails, which is exactly what I took out of before, and then you put them in those little holes. One, two, three, four, five. I like to put five in the back portion of the heel, which is in this area. And then four, one, two, three, four here in the front, which is around this area, around the heel, heel breast. Then this wheel pushes this little plate down and when you put the boot on and you position it you spin this it pushes the boot down those rods push the nails up and driving and compressing everything together now look at this that is from years of me putting this onto that because on the bottom of this plate it has that pattern and I don't like that pattern showing on my heels, so I put that there and bring it down. And then the nails drive up into it. <clears throat> Make sure it's nice and tight. And there you go. You got nails holding it all together. Total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nails holding the rubber top lift is what we call it, leather stacked heel base, the sole, the welt, midsole, and everything all together. Now this is probably one of my favorite parts of the resole process is after the final trim, that natural edge. I really like on some boots, that natural edge definitely gives it a pop compared to the black. So that's the cool thing about re-sewing boots. You can kind of customize the look of how you want it. We could change out the soles and whatever you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this lightly again and dye the edges black just to keep it original. And then we'll get to go from there. We are done with these boots and it turned out pretty nice. I didn't really do much to the uppers because this is a matte version so i don't want to put any conditioners or anything on there that'll darken the boots but the leather is really good shape if it was dry i would have put some condition on there which would have darkened it for a little bit but as you wore it it'll, it'll lighten back up um, but we went ahead and replaced the soles that midsole the cork on the inside as well as the rubber top lifts so thursday boots they actually contacted me and sent me these pair to do to show you guys the process of how they get resold um, and the different components that they make so, like i said they make they use a really good rubber outsole that has really good tread and traction and i've heard customers say that they last them anywhere from a year if they're wearing them every single day all all the way up to about five years um, so really good boots really good sole this leather midsole is a nice midsole it's it'll start to form to your foot as well as the cork um, so that's a good option a lot of cust a lot of manufacturers use rubber or like a leather board which is not leather it's a mixture of leather fibers and cardboard and paper so it'll break down over time especially if you get them wet and that's just no good um, they use we reuse that leather heel block as you saw when we took it apart we had to peel it layer by layer and then re-glue it back together and this is why i love leather stack heel bases because you can reuse them uh, a lot of manufacturers as well as their midsoles they use the leather board or fiber board for their heel bases so when you take it off it just completely breaks down and have to replace that which is an extra charge for the customer but it's a good upgrade to the boots um, but with thursday boots you don't have that issue 
Uh, they use really good leather uppers. And if you're looking for a good boot that'll last you one to five years, depending on how often you wear them, before you resole, then I would definitely go with the Thursday boot. Nice and comfortable. Now, I get a lot of questions when I do resoles for customers because at my shop, I charge $150 for the process that you just saw. Um, and Thursday boots, they range, they start about 200. So the question is, why would I spend 150 to get uh, the re resold when I could go spend 200 to get a brand new pair? Well, a couple reasons. One, you don't have to throw shoes away and we're technically considered a recycling business. Us cobblers, we repair shoes so you don't have to throw them away, which means less shoes in the landfill. And the leather uppers, they're in really good shape. There's no major cracks or anything, so there's no reason to, re to throw it away. Another great reason is you don't have to break in the boots anymore. With a brand new pair, you have to break them in while resoling them. You may, yes, you may have to maybe wear them for a week um, to break in that new cork and that leather midsole, but that's way better than having to break in a new pair. And nobody likes to break in a pair of shoes. Never heard anybody say, oh, I just love breaking in shoes. Nah. But yeah, that is why I always recommend resoling boots, even if sometimes it's a little bit more to resole them than to get a new pair. Um, you're just helping out the planet and you get to the, the whole break in period. That is the selling point for me. I, I hate breaking in new pairs. So resoling them is the only option in my mind. Um, and at the end of the day, with these Thursday boots, you're saving 50 bucks and you could put that $50 towards another pair of boots, another Thursday boots, because they make really a lot of cool different styles. So you could put that $50 towards another pair of boots in a different style, a different color. Um, and then you can just slowly start building up your wardrobe and your boots. So you can have lots of different options as well as many different sole options like the Vibram sole. We have a corded sole. We have the Vibram 700 sole and the Vibram 430 sole. And there's many other different options you could do to kind of upgrade or alter the looks um, and the function of the boots. We could do something like this, which is a heavy lug pattern sole that's more for construction. I do a lot of these for motorcyclists who like to wear their boots. Um, and sometimes these, the tread on these ones aren't deep enough to give traction on the floor, on the, on the asphalt. So they bring them in, we put those on there. These last God knows how long, very long time, and kind of gives more of a rugged look to it. Here's another pair of Captain Thursday boots that I did a while back ago with the day-night soles and the day-night heels. The one thing, the one difference between the day-night heel and the vibrant heel is the day-night have those holes in them where you could put nails through. Now, as long as you get a good stick, you don't need nails to stick your top lips on, um, but some people like that added overkill to that heel, so that is an option. But these ones, they used to be a light brown. And so what I did was I completely took the boot apart. I dyed it this dark brown and then stitched a new welt. Remember the welt was that piece that wraps around that you stitch all the sole, the midsole to. I replaced that with a natural welt to give it a pop with a leather midsole, kept the leather stacked heel base, that natural look. And I just, I just love the way these look. Did a little bit of a mirror shine on the toes. Then here's another pair of Thursday captain boots that I redid with green soles and green heels. These are Dr. Sole Super Grip soles. Just really good, great, Another option um, like compared to the Vibram and the Day-Night Souls. Just gives it a different look. And then we did some 
brass toe plates just for a little bit of pop. Um, those are mainly designed for shoes that have like an elongated toe and when you walk you kind of drag your toes quite a bit. So you prematurely wear out the front of the sole before the, the center part gets worn. So we put those on there um, to keep the sole lasting longer I guess yeah many different options to resole your boots to customize them different looks different functions that you want um, or just to keep it original we could do that now I have a website where you could go and if you're interested in getting a pair of boots like your Thursday boots resold with these day night soles um, I have a website where you can go and click and Customize how you want. You could choose your different soles. If you wanted to go with a 430, you just pick the 430 package, customize it, and then you just check out like you normally would. Make the payment um, and then box them up and send them to my shop here in Tennessee. Uh, once I get them in, I'll give you a call and let you know, or we'll go over the final details. Um, if you want to make any changes, if there's anything extra I think may need to happen uh, with the boots, and then get you, and then get you in line. Um, but coming up this weekend, I'll be running a sale on the day night soul package. Typically, like I said, I charge 150. Um, we're doing 135 plus free return shipping. So kind of save a little bit of money there and get your boots resold and customized. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Definitely go check out Thursday boots website. Great boot, great boot, great boots for a great price. Um, and yeah, go ahead and check out my website as well. We also do laser engraving and embroidery. My wife made that wooden plaque for us and she's been doing these little hats. Little cool cowboy ghost hat. She custom designed all these designs, the leaves. And then she did a couple of beanies here. One with that cowboy ghost. One with a jack-o'-lantern or what do you want to call those country pumpkin is what that says and then this one has those leaves wrapping all the way around so these will also be on our website here coming up soon I'll put that link in the description as well and um, if you want any to customize your own patches or anything like that go ahead and uh, email her we can get you started um, but thank you again for Thursday Boots sponsoring this video, letting, making this happen. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot, and I hope you guys go check out their website. Y'all have a good day, and God bless y'all.